I think it's a useful tool, isn't it? We, um, we look at it whenever we go out somewhere. Um, our company decided about a year ago to take it really seriously and we inherited a three and a half star and the, the aim is to get it to four. Uh, we was 160th in Canterbury out of all the restaurants and pubs here. We've now got up to 109. Um, our style move hasn't moved, first of all, which I don't understand why, uh, but it is a tool for people to criticise, uh, which really frustrates us. I think it's got good and bad points. I think the good points is it does give people a chance to see, you know, how well you're doing and how much people like you. And even it kind of gives you an insight into what people don't like because they might not necessarily want to say it to your face. You know, it's very much like people go, yeah, it was lovely, and then they'll go away and be like, it was awful. But it's good for critique, I think, to know. But I do think, in a certain way, they, they have got too much free what they can write like sometimes we've had some reviews that are quite personal to specific people and that's when I think it needs to be reviewed a bit more about what they're actually writing. We certainly value TripAdvisor, it's an incredibly useful tool. Uh, I think it's eclectic to all markets, so I think people who are locals look on TripAdvisor if they want to try somewhere new and tourists obviously look at it quite a lot so it's quite far-reaching and does have a real impact on people's opinions of, of where to try. I think the hardest thing about TripAdvisor is one bad review makes a big difference to uh, to a lot of places. So, I mean, thankfully, we've got a quite a good track record. But uh, I think it's a useful tool. It could be a good tool in the right hands, but the unfortunate thing is that quite often people just feel so opinionated about their experience. Sometimes they don't necessarily think about the good things or the repercussions of what they say as well in the business. Or maybe they do, maybe they're just slightly evil, I don't know. <laughs> it's so hard because you as a restaurant try and rectify anything that's been wrongly done. You know, if someone hasn't enjoyed their meal, we try and, you know, we'll replace it. But if people don't let us know, we can't work from it. So I think in a way, it does let people say what they not, might not necessarily want to say to your face as a restaurant. But, yeah, I think so. I think it does do good more than it does bad. I think it, it is to an extent. They've got quite an, uh, a complex algorithm to work out your standing out of how many restaurants based on number of views, uh, how frequent you've had reviews of certain star ratings and things like that so it's quite difficult to know how they work that out but vaguely yes I think it's a good I think uh, I'd like to think that we're first in Canterbury <laughs> but we're second on TripAdvisor so <laughs> not at all it's a accurate representation of some people's points of view on restaurants but yeah I don't think it really sums up a restaurant at all Yep, very much so. Um, some examples are, the one, one um, review was our scallops are off, don't sell scallops. Another one was our meat platter was off, find me a meat platter on our menu. Another one was the gourmet burgers that we advertise were horrible. Look next door, they advertise gourmet burgers, we don't. So, people put on there what they want sometimes with no legitimacy at all and it really frustrates us. I've heard of people being paid to write trip advisors on certain restaurants to like just write bad stuff on it I think like you probably get two kinds of people who do reviews people that just want to express their opinions be it good or bad and then people who just want to like have a pop at the business I feel yes and no <laughs> why uh, we'll take if we have constructive criticism we'll take it on board and we try to sort of uh, improve on it um, one issue we get sometimes is our service speed because everything's cooked freshly and people do moan a bit about the food's great, the pub's great, but we could have been served quicker. We understand that and we're trying to think of procedures and how to quicken it up. Uh, so that's a quite um, a constructive criticism we take on board. Uh, when people blatantly haven't eaten here and have absolutely written a bad review about us, uh, we go online uh, to answer their review. Um, Given our phone number and Lisa's name to come phone up and contact, and not one person that whole year since we've been doing it has bothered to phone up. So you do wonder sometimes what these people are doing. I 
it's so hard. I'm really 50-50 because, like I say, I feel like it's really good for someone to voice their opinion, but also I don't think TripAdvisor are is monitored enough of what they're actually writing. Like, I've, I've put reviews on places before, and, you know, I'd never dream of actually writing something about a personally a waitress, and I feel like if you're specifically picking out one person rather than the, the company... I just feel it's a little bit, we've had it before and it's really upsetting when us girls read something that's specifically written about us, you know. We do try our best. So I feel like it should be monitored about what they're reading a bit more. Uh, I think generally it can be trusted as long as you don't take everything at face value. Nowhere's going to please everyone, so there's always going to be that one person that's... Uh... <laughs> I think it should be taken with a good pinch of salt because um, people's opinions are always different on everything and you can't always agree with everyone so someone might say that one thing you might not even notice when you go yourself No, this is, uh, we want to genuine know where we are sort of uh... I've never asked them to but I've had a lot of people say like ask me my name and things like that and I'm like mm, it's George, why? and then they're like oh, I'm going to write a nice trip advisor and we've had quite a few personally stick like pointing out some of the waitresses and stuff so that's quite nice but I've never asked someone we were thinking about maybe because a lot of people I think with TripAdvisor even a lot of people like the food they don't tend to go on TripAdvisor we don't actively ask them um, but we're not afraid to talk to them about our standing on TripAdvisor uh, and if people would like to put up a review they're more than welcome never asked anyone to do anything Not that I'm aware of, no, except for making us very frustrated when it's blatantly. I can give you an example, New Year's Eve, we had uh, four bookings New Year's Eve, we had live music on, the four bookings were told there's music on, they loved it, they stayed till the end. There's a review on there from two people who apparently made a booking here, uh, we're told we didn't have this on the menu, didn't have that on the menu, and absolutely did not enjoy the experience. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't serve them, and it's very frustrating. I've really good stuff. To be honest, not anything bad. I've not heard anyone say, oh, I saw a TripAdvisor saying something really bad about you. Or they always say, oh, we looked on TripAdvisor and you've got amazing reviews. It certainly is hard not to be affected by reviews on a personal level. If, uh, if you have a good review, it obviously makes you feel very proud. And if you have a bad review, you obviously feel quite angry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, undoubtedly, every single review that's gone up has affected our business in some way, whether small or big. I wouldn't say the business, it can affect you personally though, some people's jobs. We had someone give us a bad review when we moved our premises and they said instead of the veg box cafe we should call it the shoe box cafe because it's smaller and like, obviously you're trying your best with the space you've got and the money you've got and the time and energy you've got and then to have someone just give you a bad review because it's smaller is a bit like, I find that a bit weird and a bit shitty for people really. Very fine. <laughs> Very fine because um, when things are blatantly not right, where they're criticising items that are not even on our menu, uh, then I think that's defamation and I'm, I do query who's actually writing these. Once it starts getting a bit too personal and they don't really have a valid point, like I said, this example, that gentleman who didn't actually pay for his meal, it's okay, he didn't enjoy it, but he was moaning about how much the bill was. And it was kind of like, well, Yes, that's a negative. The bill could have been expensive, but you didn't actually pay for it. So that's when I think it gets a bit... To me, the line is when you start saying that a restaurant is bad because of what it is, as opposed to of how it was. If you go to a restaurant that clearly uh, markets itself as sort of uh, informal street food restaurant, or if they say we're fine dining silver service, and then somebody puts a review up saying, I don't like fine dining silver service, or I don't like street food, then obviously I think people who go on there, and I go on there myself, you shouldn't be writing a review about the type of restaurant because everybody knows what type of restaurant they're going to before they go. Uh, but I think anything about your experience there, about the food, about the service, it's all fair game, really. I think it depends really on whether or not the people who are coming to your business are just coming to it because they've seen something in TripAdvisor or because they actually know your business. Like obviously every business has their regular customers who come in because they love certain aspects of it and you'll always get people who come in to try it and they don't like it or it's not for them. 